is a crazy game to have at a restaurant, guys. Dude, you know why I know that Sanshir might be the best Yunami Shen spot in the city, Andrew? Come on, Abalonely, don't leave me lonely. Counted a couple times. We're all familiar with American restaurant chains having success in the Asian market, such as McDonald's, Popeye's, Cheesecake Factory, Shake Shack. But what about high-end, nice Asian chains opening in America? Well, it's starting to happen now. Let's explore a few chains that have just opened up right in New York City, straight from Asia. Our first high-end chain from China is the Dolar Shop. Andrew, this chain is from Shanghai, but it's based off Macau flavors, and they only have six stores in the West, but about 50 of them in China. I think a lot of people prior to the $100 hot pot spots opening would question, why can't you just do a $30 all you can eat? But uh, let me tell you this, the quality and the cost per unit of every ingredient at every step, whether that's the broth, the meats, the vegetables, is completely different. Not Dollar Shop, it's Dolar Shop. Let's Check start. it out. You can see the decor here is very, very modern. It's not trying to make it feel like that you're in like some Chinese temple, but it's trying to give those Chinese elements, but in a new digital way. Another cool feature about this spot that's different than other ones are the open kitchen. Look, you can see the chefs pouring your broth right here. Look, he's slicing the meat, the wagyu right there. Kind of a soothing sound. All right, here's a quick tip. When you're sitting down a hot pot, just know that there's gonna be a lot of reaching across the table for ingredients and stuff. So make sure, roll up your sleeves. Woo! Okay, so okay, the, the five minutes for the cubes, 10 seconds for the Wagyu. You guys, I am sitting in front of a mushroom truffle broth right now. Take a look at this. These are the biggest truffle flakes I've ever seen. I mean, this is a very luxurious broth. Here I have the split pot. You know, some people call it the yin yang pot because it's shaped in the yin yang. I have the silver broth, which is one of their signatures, and then I have the mala spicy. David, what are you putting in? The first well, things in your broth. I'm not necessarily about the tripe life. I'm gonna put not these about uh, the tripe life. tofu skins. You should probably look for the check here to be about like 60 to $100, depending on you know what you order. I think there's a lot of variants due on the cut of meat and the volume of meat. This is not supposed to be in there for more than 10 seconds. I have the short rib, David has the Wagyu. I can't even tell the difference right now from an eye test. Oh, 10 seconds. Look at that. Dolar, Dolar shop. Next up, we got the shrimp paste. Andrew, you're about to uh, create some balls out of this. Shrimp paste here is very, very famous because they use a technique of slamming the shrimp to make it smooth. I think you just do this. I'm just gonna, boom, hit it. David, boom. It's cooked, it was pretty quick. Man, I'm just gonna go straight into the sacha for myself. I'm a really big fan of the sacha jiang, especially the Cantonese style. Oh man, that was raw. Yeah, that wasn't cooked. Yeah, that was not cooked yet. Yeah. I jumped the gun. I do like the mala broth, but not all the time. I think, I think especially for lunchtime, you cannot do mala. That doesn't make sense for you to be mala out for the rest of your day. What I really like about the silver broth is, guys, it took eight hours to make. It's very labor intensive, and it just tastes like a regular broth that you can just drink. I wouldn't really drink the mala soup on its own, but the silver broth, hell yeah. Andrew, in 2021, in a lot of cities around America, it's really easy to spend $100 eating something Chinese. And I think that that's um, really different than before, because um, previously it was almost like the Coco Cabana style, you know, the Marilyn Monroe and all these like New York people would go to in Midtown, or in the hood, it would be like $10 for like, you know, pork, fried rice and chicken wings. And then you got Chinatown style, but this is almost like a whole new elevated genre of chain that's being ported over directly from Asia with no compromises. Oh, right, you Eric, fire. Eric, Eric, what do we have here? Can you share with us right. this ice box where my heart used to be is? Where, where, what are we looking at? Catch of the day. <laughs> we have uh, shrimps here, we have oysters, abalone, and some uh, scallops. Abalone, of course, is one of the most beloved uh, mollusks of like Chinese culture. It's just one of those things that everybody loves. It's super valued, super expensive. I'm gonna put the oyster in here, slide it in, and then this abalone, bro. I might have to put the abalone in the truffle one too, so it's extra fancy. Look at that, it's gonna slide off. Oh, the abalone was cut up, but I'm trying to look for it right now. I don't wanna lose it because each slice was like a 
probably two, three dollars on its own. Oh, that's a mushroom. Come on, where my Abby at? Come on, Abba, lonely, don't leave me lonely. There we go. Found it. All right, everybody, that wraps it up here at Dolar Shop. That is a Southern style, Macanese inspired uh, individual hot pot spot that is from China, making its way in the West. Hey, on to the next spot. All right, so our next location that's coming straight over from China is called Hu Tao Li. Now, they only have a few locations outside of China. One's in Toronto, New York. They have some in Paris, Milan. This spot is very, very different. It is a live music Chinese restaurant. The decor is something you've never seen. The vibe is very different. They have cover bands playing all the time. The food is really good and it's very aesthetic, guys. It's in the middle of Koreatown, New York, which is a huge party area, especially for Koreans and Asians alike. So it fits right here, guys. Guys, Hu Tao Li, you gotta see this. The live music hasn't started tonight because it usually starts at about 6.30, but still got some Chinese cover bands right here. So this is our house special Hutali roast chicken. It is marinated overnight in our special secret marinade. And then the next day it is dried out and uh, we put it in the roaster for a long time. And then they take it out and they chop it up and display it like this. And then we take it off and we pound it a couple times just to get all the seasonings in and make it a little more tender. All right, so our food at Hu Tao Li has arrived, guys, and I know it's not 6 p.m. yet, so the live music is not rocking yet, but I can tell you right now that based off of aesthetics and smell and even the dishes, man, there's nothing like this. So I'm gonna start with this seafood fest right here. Obviously, um, there's a lot of different seafoods in here, but I love how they kept the crab head right here. They have the sauce, there's a lot of uh, egg in this sauce as well. So actually what I'm about to do is I'm gonna take a lot of the soup and do something that a lot of people don't do, which is I'm gonna scoop this rice. I'm gonna scoop it into the crab bowl. They did not tell me to eat it like this. This is totally my own doing. So if y'all are um, you know, offended by this, then let me know. But here, guys, I use the crab head as a bowl. Let's go, is Hu Tao Li have some fun? That was a great kind of spicy tomato egg flavor right there. Um, if you're into that, definitely check that out. But I got to move on to the actual premier item. This is the Hu Tao Li chicken. So this is a thigh piece right here. This is, by the way, one of the best bites of Chinese chicken right here. This cut, exactly. All right, guys, I'm going no sauce. That was it. That is a must get here at Hu Tao Li. This is the dish that I've actually never had before. First time having it, this is the Gan Guo Tu Do Pian, which is literally translates to, with my, you know, very mediocre Chinese, it is a uh, dry pot with potato slices. And you can tell that they're lightly fried all over, so they're almost like extra thick potato chips. They're gonna be crispy on the outside and very spicy because the peppers are cooked right in with it. All right, Ryan, um, can you actually explain to me why this dish in particular, which I've had before, is called the Ma La Shang Guo? Uh, so basically, this dish is called Mala Shanggo is because that it has all kinds of different ingredients put into one of the pots. And it's basically a mix of almost every single type of dishes that you might have in your daily life. What does Shanggo uh, translate to? Directly in Chinese to English, it's basically a flavor pot since it has oh. so many different flavors. Shanggo, is that the same guo as, as, as Kuo Guo? Uh, yes. Shang as in like more flavor, right? Yep. Shang is, okay, yep. okay. See, I'm getting a Chinese lesson here. <laughs> See, this is the good thing about Hu Tao Li. All the waiters are very, very knowledgeable and they can explain everything to you. Shout out to the Sufus down there, bro. Hmm. So good. Here you have your fried pumpkin with salted egg yolk pudding. Let's go on for this. I'm expecting this to kind of cool down all the other spices that I just ate. So basically what that is, it's kind of like a ball of like mashed up pumpkin. So it's sweet and it's super soft. Wow, that is so good. 
because there's so many ways you can pay. Venmo, PayPal, Alipay, WeChat Pay. If you get your WeChat wallet going, you do need a Chinese bank account though. I actually really want to try to scan one of those QR codes right now. My QR code right there. Oh, it zooms in for me. I didn't even do that. Official account from Hu Tao Li. All right. So now I'm on Chinese page. I'm not going to lie. I can't read uh, really 90% of that. Any I can messages? send messages to yep. the restaurant. Yep. Do you guys screen the messages? What if I send something very inappropriate? Yes, we do actually. The, the system actually uh, itself has a detection. Now when you click the uh, messages here, and okay. you can type anything. And it will generally pop out in around one or two minutes. Hu Tao Li. I sent it up. We'll probably see it pop up in, you know, uh, After it a couple minutes from another. now. Yep. Every night around 8.30, you just scan the QR code with uh, wait, WeChat, Weixin, uh -huh. and then shake it. If you, if you get the top three, you get a free drink. Okay, so we're scanning the game code right now. Now you're in the game. Shake it. And we'll start beginning to climb. So the faster you shake, why am I hey, hey, Hayden's going crazy. You're gonna blow out your arm, bro. Time. This is my first time. This is my first I gotta win. <laughs> what? Why am I so slow? I'm killing it. Oh I got a lot of experience. Why? Oh, I'm not on the screen already. Yeah. <laughs> this is a crazy game to have at a restaurant, guys. Especially when everyone gets a few drinks in them. <laughs> Okay, so I hit the Lambo. I got first. Second. Oh, Layla second. Oh shit, good job, good job, good job, yo. Thank you. All right, good job, so, guys. Good job, guys, good job, okay, okay. So the question is, what do I win right now? Right now? <laughs> what would I win? Like a drink? I don't know. You know what it is? I won a fun game with the staff. All right, guys, thank you. So to wrap it up here, man, I think Hu Tao Li is actually kind of special in a sense that, you know, when you eat at a lot of Chinese restaurants, it's kind of hard to feel a sense of community and camaraderie with people outside of your table. But here, you have live music, you have games, you can win prizes, um, the staff is friendly, and so it kind of just brings people together. So I would definitely recommend coming here on a weekend or for a birthday, some type of event. All the food that we got with the seafood was uh, about $200 after tax and tip. So I'm letting you know that the food is of good quality. It does taste good and there's a lot to do here. And you know, just for a Chinese restaurant to provide this amount of fun and engagement, I think is very impressive. And that's why they have so many locations in China. I even think some Western restaurants might kind of take cues and start incorporating interactive apps with their restaurant, right? It might not be through WeChat, but it might be throw something else. So, man, Hu Tao Li, man, I'm glad I came. Thank you for coming to Tao Li. Okay, our last and final Chinese restaurant concept that got ported over from China to America in the past year is San Shi Noodle. Now, this one kind of came in low key. There's not a lot of articles written about it coming over from Yunnan. There's not a lot of coverage of the founders, which is unlike the other two spots we went to, but they are on trend because guys, the Yunnan rice noodles are very, very popular around New York. And they've got some really cool like appetizers. So you guys, San Shi Noodle here in the East Village. Let's check it out. talking about stuff that comes from Asia. This is absolutely what I'm talking about. A um, toy machine display of the Yunnan rice noodles. We are now looking for a online store. So it can go to the house. Dad is letting them know that we're filming a foodie video. Very nice. My mom said that this is the one. This is a Yunnan rice noodles. But this is a Yunnan rice noodles. This is a Yunnan rice noodles. Okay. 这个是鱼片，然后这个是豆皮，这个是呃，这个是王子菇，这个是呃，石木耳，这个是银耳，也是木耳的一种，然后这个是呃韭菜，还有葱酸菜，这个是呃培根。嗯，好。All right, and we are looking at the spicy brisket, but here at Yunnan Mission at um San Shi. They tend to do it for you. You know how some of the other spots they tell you to, you know, basically set up your own bridge noodles. 
here is part of the package. Next level service. Actually oh, at Sanshi, they actually tell you how to do it and the first step, I did not know this, was to coat the sliced meat with the scrambled egg. So, maybe they're talking about the uh, fish here in this sense. All right, so Andrew, I went and had the uh, Fu Yun, AKA the waiter do it for me, but you, Mr. Mixologist himself, are gonna be doing it yourself. Yeah. So what I'm doing is, I'm gonna mix up this egg right here. Do you see this? You're talking about I the have little... this sliced fish right here. I'm gonna pour the egg on top of the sliced fish. Yo! Yep, yep, yep. You know yep. what I love about this place, Andrew? I think that San Shi, it's so experiential for the $20 mark. Yeah. The appetizers here at San Shi are super authentic. We're in the East Village right now, and I have a Tieban Youyu, which is a, a, a grilled squid, and this is like a Squid word squid. This is Jia Gun Fun. Yo, you uh, never had that before, right? This is a fern root noodle. I've never had it. Um, I know that there's a lot of other similar noodles around Asia, um, but this one is fern and root. That could be from the uh, Miaozu Mong Mountains. Yeah, man, it's supposed to be very healthy. And appetizers. Tieban Yo Yu. I'm not gonna lie, Andrew, every time I have a piece of squid like this, it reminds me of two things. Mm -hmm. Taiwan, and the second one is a Chinese mukbang that just got banned. So this started off as a flavor at KFC China, the New Orleans flavor, but now it's just almost like a Chinese young modern flavor. Yeah, it would almost be like uh, what we view as like sweet and sour sauce at McDonald's where it's like it was based off an of Asian flavor, but it just has gone a completely different direction. This is based off a of Western flavor. It's gone on a derivative. Let's go. And then of course I got the fried fish balls here. All right, you guys, on to the main attraction here at San Shi Noodle. Andrew, uh, I'm looking at the Yunnan Mishen. For me, I got the spicy brisket, which they said is the number one top seller right now. A little bit, uh, you know, not untraditional, but obviously beef brisket more for the US market. Yo, I'm gonna try this spicy one with ramen noodles. So this is the only one that we substituted. And like I said, you know, them giving you that ramen noodle uh, option, I think is really cool. It's just- Well, would you say that a lot of um, Western people, they would opt for the ramen noodle? Yeah, I mean, if you don't know what rice noodles are, you can still come here and have the soup. Hua jiao ji tang. I think this is the winner. Winner, winner, chicken soup dinner. Dude, you know why I know that San Shi might be the best Yunnan Mishen spot in the city, Andrew? Because I've got this same um, fish maw chicken broth at some other spots and I really didn't like it. But here, they executed it A1. Guys, as you can see, we went to three different price tiers, three different experiential concepts. Andrew, what do you think of all these spots that are opening up in the past year directly ported from China? Obviously, some of them, they're changing them more than others, and some of them, they're just keeping straight up fully authentic. A lot of people would think that chains from China are only going to be very high-end and expensive. That's not necessarily true, guys. Sanxi, I mean, you can eat for under about $15 here if you just get one of these to yourself. And it's a really cool experience. It's very clean. The decor is still on par with a lot of other spots. The spot that I'm looking forward to going back to is definitely Hutaoli just because the energy is so different. It is more than a restaurant. It's, it's like a Chinese experience, not just a Chinese restaurant. Really cool that all these Chinese concepts are coming over. Obviously, statistically, do I think all of them will be successful? No but some of them will be, and uh, it'll be dependent on the adjustments that they make you know, to adapt to the you know, market here. Um, I would say that one concept I'm really looking forward to coming over, Andrew, is a Huang Manji concept. And they already have it on the West Coast, Yang's braised chicken, but they kind of like westernized it too much. I'm talking about the real authentic Jinan Huang Manji from Yang's. One thing that I would like to see in America that maybe America's ready for, is this one restaurant that I've seen advertisements for in like the airport where it's like this big Mongolian guy eating this lamb rib. And I just think the Mongolian lamb ribs, they gotta come to America, man. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching that brand new Chinese Concepts restaurant video. Please let us know in the comment section below a chain that you'd like to see come over and what do you think of what we tried today? Is it for you? Do you think as an ABC, even if you're like American born Chinese, can you relate to it or do you feel like too distant from it you know, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. Let us know in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, and until next time, we out. Peace. Peace. Eric, you're from Macau, right? And my yeah. father's from Hong Kong, so, you know, we have a lot of Southern blood, and Southerners, they love seafood. We do, absolutely. Dude, yeah, they call me, uh, people call me a cat, because I eat fish.
fish a lot. Yeah, they call you a. <laughs>